Hello, I am Dan from Ace RV Rentals and Sales, and today we are going to be taking a look at this brand new 2023 Thor Chateau Model 22E. Just like always, I'll be giving you the full walkthrough inside and outside, so you'll be all set and prepared when you decide to rent from us. Now, we like to say for all of our RVs that the height is 12 and a half feet for our customers, so please watch out for places like parking garages and drive throughs although most tunnels should be fine. And also, although it's not written here as of yet, this RV is 24 feet long, so on the shorter side of Class C's, perfect for uh, beginning campers. First up here, we have our freshwater inlet. We'll give you a hose for this, but this will be to fill up your water tank on this RV. This is gonna be 50 gallons. This is going to be for your sink, your shower, your toilet, anything inside that's gonna be using water. So if you're on the road and you're not hooked up to a campsite, I'll get to that later, you're gonna be taking water off of your tank and this will be how you fill it up. Now down here we have our generator. This generator is basically a substitute for when you're not plugged in at a campsite. Now the generator is basically a substitute for when you're not plugged in at a campsite. This will be powering all of your major 120 volt appliances inside the RV. That'll be your microwave, that'll be your AC unit on the roof, it'll be your TV and your outlets. This RV is going to run off of uh, regular 87 gas and this generator will be running off of gas as well. So as long as you're at least a quarter tank full of gas, you can expect this to work. The only reason you'd have to come out here and do anything, because you can turn it on and off inside, is if you accidentally run the AC and the microwave at the same time. That'll be too powerful for this generator and it will cause it to trip. So in case you do that, your breaker is gonna be right here. This will flip back if you run the AC and the microwave at the same time. All you wanna do is just come out here, take this top off like I did, and just flip it towards you. Next up here, we have our exhausts for the furnace and the hot water. So of course, expect them to be hot and don't put your hand there. Next to that, we have an outside shower. This is just a little faucet with two knobs. So if you're at the beach and you wanna wash off sand or dirt before you head inside, you can do it this way. Over here, we have a little outlet for your TV cable, which we'll give you. But if your campsite has cable, you can just hook this up uh, to the post in the ground, stick the other end over here, and you can get all the channels through cable. If not, you also have an antenna for this RV so you can find all the local channels through the air instead. This is our power cord connector. This RV takes 30 amp service, so you wanna make sure your campsite provides 30 amps. But once you're plugged in, everything inside will be working on electricity and you don't have to worry about your generator at all. So again, that'll be for your AC on the roof, your microwave, your TV, and your outlets. This here is our gas inlet, so as I said before, this RV takes regular 87 gas, so no premium or diesel. In the back here, we have our dumping station. So this will be how we dump out our black and gray waste tanks. So we have this hose right here that we'll give you. This is your sewer hose. You're gonna take this end with the teeth and then you're gonna hook it onto this outlet right here. Just clip it on like this. All right, and you're gonna take the other end with this elbow and you're gonna stick this in the ground at your sewage or wherever else you're dumping. From there we have two color-coded valves. We have our black valve for the black tank, that's your toilet water, and then we have our gray valve for the gray tank, that is your sink and shower water. So when it's pushed in like this, that means it's closed, so nothing would be coming out. You would just have to pull it open like that, and then that would open it up and the waste would come out due to gravity. There are gauges inside that will tell you how full or empty these tanks are. So once they're empty, you can just push them back in to close it, then just unhook the hose and you are all set. Now all the way in the back here we have two more inlets. We have our city water connection. So you're going to use the same hose that you would for your fresh water, but instead this will be when you're at your campsite, you're going to hook it up in here, connect the other end to your pump, and then this will bypass your water tank and go straight into your pipes. So in other words, you're using the campsite's water instead of your own. Next to that, we have our tank flush valve, which you will not have to worry about. This just helps us clean out and sanitize the tanks for the next customer. Around the back of the RV, we only have two real things to worry about. We have our rear view camera in the back here. Um, that'll go out about eight feet. Um, if you put your RV in reverse, this will automatically pop up on your display, or there's also an option, you can just leave that on when you're driving. Also, we have our ladder that goes up to the roof. We ask that our customers do not go up to the roof, it's just for service purposes. Now onto the passenger side of this RV, we have our biggest storage area right over here. This is also where we've put all of our hoses and cords that we'll give you for your rental. This here is our bag for the sewer hose, which I've already showed you. And then we also have our power cord connector. Once again, this is 30 amps. 
This part will go into the RV, and then this three pronged will go into the post at your campsite. And then lastly, we have this bag, which has a few things. This white hose is your fresh and city water hose that we will put into both of those outlets. We also have our TV cable, if you have cable hookup. And lastly, we have this 30 amp to 15 amp adapter that you'll put onto the end of your power cord right here. Once you're plugged into 15 amp, however, everything inside will be working except for your AC unit on the roof. Next to our storage, we have two regular power outlets here. You just wanna make sure that you're plugged into shore power at your campsite or your generator is running for these to work. This here is the exhaust for our refrigerator. It'll start leaking water and it's just condensation, so it's nothing to worry about. This size of a tank will last you about a week or so before you'll have to refill it. That concludes the outside part of this walkthrough, so we're gonna head inside here. You'll also notice on this entry door that we have a detachable screen door here as well. And inside we also have a smoke detector and carbon monoxide detector. Over to my right here we have all of our lights. So we have our galley lights, they will be the ceiling lights just on the inside here. We have our step light, so this will be this little light right here. Below that we have our cargo light, so you want to make sure that this is on if you want to turn on and off the lights in your storage. We also have a step light, it's going to be right underneath the steps here, um, it'll be better to see at night. We also have our LED strip for the awning, right over here. And then we have our switch for the awning itself, so you can just extend it and retract it with this switch here. You just want to make sure that the parking brake is on and your keys are out of the ignition for this to work. This dial here is for our house body, which is actually underneath these steps right here. It'll be for very minor electrical things, for the lights, the awning, and a bit of the furnace as well. You will not have to worry about turning this on and off, as it will be powered when you're driving, when you're plugged into your campsite, or even when the generator is running. Also right at the entrance, we have the most important part of the inside. This is going to be our control panel. This will tell you pretty much everything you need to know about the inside of this RV. I'll start with the corner here with these buttons. These will be the levels of your tanks. So we have each of these buttons. Once you hold them down, these lights will go up from empty to full. So if I hold down LPG, that's your propane tank, you can see that goes up to two thirds. We have our battery, that's our house battery. You can see that's two thirds charged. Our fresh water is gonna be one third. Our black water, that's our toilet water, is empty. And then our gray water, sink and shower, is two thirds. These two switches are gonna be for our tank heaters for our black tank and gray tank. You're gonna turn these on if you're traveling to a place where it's below freezing to prevent your waste tanks from freezing over. Which here is for our water pump, which also runs on the house battery. Once I turn this on, you'll see this little light turns on here. Um, that will mean that you're drawing water from your water tank. In other words, uh, if you want to take water from your tank, you're going to have this on, and when you're taking water from your city water, that'll be from your campsite, you're going to have this off. And next to that, we have our water heater. You can either use propane gas to heat up your water um, if you're not plugged in at a campsite. Once you turn this on, it'll take up to 15 minutes to heat up your water, so just plan that much in advance. If you are plugged in at your campsite, you can use 110 volt electricity instead to heat up your water and just save a bit of that propane. And over in this corner, we have our generator. This number will be the total number of hours that the generator has been on ever since it was manufactured. So right now it says 2.9 hours. We recommend you have the generator on for no more than three hours at a time, and then have it off for about two to three hours just to prevent it from overheating. If you want to turn it on, you're actually gonna hold down stop first until this little red light turns on. So it just means it's primed and ready. Then I can hold down start, you'll hear it turn on. There you go. You're going to wait about 30 seconds, and then when you hear the microwave beep, that means everything inside will be working. With the generator on, I'll show you now how to find channels on your TV. So once it's on, you're going to press input here, and you're going to make sure that your input is set to TV. Once you do that, you're going to press menu here. You're going to go over to channels, and then you're going to press auto channel search. Right now, we're not plugged into a campsite or cable, so we're going to use the antenna. But if you were plugged in at your campsite, you're gonna go over to cable from the wall. I'll just press enter for antenna, and then it'll take about five minutes to find channels for you. 
Over here on the roof we have our AC unit. So this dial here will be to control the temperature, so this will be colder. And then we have our dial here, we can turn it to gray, which will be just the fan. And then if we use the blue, that'll be the compressor and your AC. So you're just going to turn it slowly between settings. To turn off your generator, you'll just hold down stop until you hear it turn down. In the back here, we have our so-called master bedroom with a bunch of storage up and around. We have a skylight with a fan here as well. And then we also have our furnace control here. In the corner here, we have our bathroom. Most things in here are self-explanatory, but I'll just go over a few things. We have our toilet paper here, which is RV specific. You want to go to a campsite or Walmart, the camping section will also sell this kind of RV marine dissolvable toilet paper. We have our toilet here. You're just going to push down on this pedal to flush it down. Of course, make sure that the water pump is on if you're not hooked up to your campsite. We also have a fan and skylight over here. We have some bottles of solution that we've just put in the, uh, in the sink here. Um, this is just going to be to clean up your black water tank in case the smell comes up. So you can just pour down half a bottle down there whenever the smell comes up from the toilet. And finally behind me we have our standard shower with hot and cold knobs. We have our wardrobe here with a little pole in here so you can hang your clothes. And we also have another drawer down here. The refrigerator here is going to run on propane gas when you're not plugged in at a campsite, but when you do plug in at a campsite, it will automatically switch over to electricity. So no matter what, your food is going to stay cold the whole time and nothing will go bad. We have a standard house microwave here. Just make sure not to run the AC and the microwave at the same time when you're on the generator. Below that we have our stove and oven, so I'm just going to lift up this glass top here. We have knobs for our three burners, and then we have our igniter right here. So I'm just going to set this to the fire option here. You can hear the propane come out, and I'll just hit it once to turn on your stove. Once you're done, you're just going to wait a few minutes before you put the top back on. Uh, in case the propane gets trapped in there, it might shatter the glass. Now, you think that we have an oven, but these are actually two very big drawers, um, usually for pots and pans. We have our sink and you can just put this on here for a bit of extra tabletop. We also have some additional tabletop you can just bring up like this and then just push on these two parts down here to bring it back down. This here is our dinette area. We have seat belts for two people and this will also turn into a bed which I'll show you in just a minute. The first part is you want to take these cushions out, just pull them out like this. Both the top one and the bottom one. Pulling these cushions out, you'll also see that we have an anchor for a child seat. Underneath the tabletop, you'll see a little lever here. When it's pulled all the way to the right, it's locked in. And when you pull it all the way to the left, it'll allow you to push this tabletop down. Just like and lastly, we can put our cushions, all four of them, in this format, and here is our bed. To use the windows, you just want to pull this open and close it. This, when it's pushed up this way, that means it's open, and then pushing it down will lock it. And for the blinds, they're just pulled down and push up. Something that's becoming a bit more common in RVs these days is we have a wireless charger connected to our dinette here. And lifting this up, you'll also see that we have some outlets for a USB and a USB-C. For safety, we have our smoke detector up front here, and beneath the dinette we have our carbon monoxide and propane detector. This here is our overhead bunk. So I've taken this ladder from the wardrobe and just stuck it onto this cushion here, which is also movable. So when you're driving, you can take this whole cushion out and just push it back there. We also have a privacy curtain there, right in the corner. And this will connect to this Velcro here. So at nighttime, you're just gonna drape that across here. We'll also give you a copy of the registration. We'll also give you a bag with some extra fuses for the fuse box, which is actually underneath right here. This is a combined fuse and circuit breaker box, so in case anything happens, you can always give that roadside number a call and they'll help you sort that out. And lastly, we'll also give you a little QR code on a piece of paper that will give you an online guide with pretty much all of your frequently asked questions there. Here we are in the front cab. Most things are just like a regular truck or car. We just have our AC, uh, we have our windshield wiper lights over here. I'll just point you to this display here. So we have 
our radio, we can connect our phone with Bluetooth or CarPlay or Android Auto. And if I go over here to the right, we have our rear view camera. So I can just click this and then we can keep this on when we're driving. If I turn on my indicator right or left, we actually have side view cameras as well. So that's our right and our left here. As far as the keys go, we have our ignition right here. This purple key is going to be for your cabin door. And then this gray key is going to be for all the outside compartments. We also have our contact information here on the keychain. So you can call us with any questions you have about your rental. But if you have any problems with your RV, we'll give you a separate roadside assistance number. By my left foot here, we have our parking brake. So I'm just gonna push down on it with my foot. And then to release it, you have a little handle right here. And that will be all for our 2023 Thor Chateau Model 22E. I'm Dan from Ace RV Rentals and Sales, and have a great trip.